In this morning's paper, I was saddened to see that monarch butterflies have just been added to the endangered species list. But then I was delighted to see two of those fragile creatures feasting on echinacea pollen at the edge of our upper pollinator patch. Our efforts on this small farm alone cannot reverse the quick drop in monarch numbers, but combined with the concerted efforts of home gardeners, horticulturalists, and farmers across this nation, these butterflies still have a fighting chance. Up in field one, the swath of green on the left is where the shallots were planted very early this spring, and to the right is an area of harvested garlic that had been planted late last fall. The shallots were planted through holes in heavy pre-punched paper mulch and then covered with compost. The beds looked pretty good until early June, but soon the warm season weeds and grasses began to germinate in the planting holes. Once the weeds got any size on them, they could not be pulled without uprooting the shallots. We will get a respectable harvest out from underneath these weeds, but some careful early season weeding might have avoided all this mess. After raking back the straw left over from the garlic mulch, these beds will be direct seeded with fall crops. In a normal year, we might be looking to transplant directly through the thinning mulch, and we could even be using the straw from the pathways to patch any thin areas on the beds. But no two years are alike, and the basic resilience and flexibility that we build into our crop plan allows us to make nimble changes like this that help the farm to remain productive even under the increasingly volatile growing conditions we are facing. The diversity of plant types in our upper pollinator meadow produce a wide variety of bloom types which in turn attract a wide variety of insect life. While we may never hit the ideal mix of flower types and bloom times in this meadow, we are quite happy to see so many plant communities coexisting in a space that was becoming unsuitable for food crops. The partial shade of the pine windbreak to the east helps relieve the water stress on these flowering plants even during our current moderate drought conditions. It is good to remember that the benefits from the windbreak also go on hidden underground where the cooperative strains of soil fungal life help both the trees and the flowers. Down in field two the main season tomatoes have been getting trellised and pruned on a regular schedule. The dark leaf mold pathway mulch is holding up nicely and the straw around the base of the plants is doing a great job with both weed suppression and water retention. The eggplant have recovered nicely from their inundation of weeds. The weeds that were left intentionally on the pathway occultation strips to bake in the sun are unfortunately already making a comeback and will need to be dealt with before they flower and set seed. The bee balm in the field two pollinator bed is flowering strongly and attracting a robust population of pollinator and predator insects. The peppers on the far side of that bed are still looking a little spotty where some of the transplants were stunted by the rough treatment they got during our highly variable spring weather. They may yet bounce back and provide a harvestable crop before the season draws to a close. The winter squash row covers are gradually being removed to allow native bee pollinators access to the flowers and hopefully will produce us a nice crop. And down at the far end of the field, red root pigweed has outpaced the oat and clover cover crop that never germinated properly in the dry conditions this year. Down here we are using the flail mower to chop and drop those tall weeds before they flower and set seed. We are going to try buckwheat as a smother crop in this area. If we manage to get the quarter inch of rain that is forecast for the end of this week, it may be enough to kick the buckwheat into action. So despite all the weed pressure we experienced in the month of July, I'd like to leave you with an additional image 
of that pair of endangered monarchs. Those echinacea plants sprouted from volunteer seeds and they will become perennial members of this flower patch. Put even a small area of your yard or farm into pollinator plants and reap the benefits of attracting predator species to deal with your pest insects while you enjoy the resurgence of some threatened butterflies. Thanks for watching. Leave comments and questions below, and I will catch you next time.